Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 10 plus code along this morning. Uh, we're going to be making a higher or lower gain. You might have guessed that from some of the gifts we were putting in, putting in. Um, so before we get going, we will um, I sort of do two things. One is I'll give you a preview of what we're going to be making in a second. Uh, but first of all, just to announce the winner from last week's code along. So last week, last Saturday, we only had one code along for all age groups, um, which was the arcade dino jump. So let me go on to my screen here. So it was the arcade dino jump game and we had lots of brilliant uh, entries for the competition. Um, but the winner that we selected was code Dan, who did a kind of Among Us character uh, instead of the dino. Oh. Sorry, let me get ready to play it. But as well as jumping over obstacles, you, ha you have to go under them. So uh, it was a really, really good idea there. So Kodan was the winner of the microbit. So we're gonna send out the microbit to Kodan. Okay. Um, so let's see, what are we doing today? Today we are going to be doing a, a higher or lower game using a microbit. So we're just going to use the simulator. Um, if you have a microbit at the end, you can actually put it on to your microbit to play the game or to play it with your friends or family. But you're able to play the game using the simulator. So I'll give you a kind of preview um, and I'll desc describe what we're doing. So basically the way the game works is the microbit is going to show you a number between 0 and 99 or one in 99. And you have to guess if the next number is going to be above or below it. Um, again, between one and 99. So say it shows 20, you might say, okay, next number is probably going to be higher. And then it'll show 67. And then you might guess lower, and so on. It's just going to be uh, generating random numbers. Um, and the, the game is to see how many of them you can get correct. So here I'll refresh. So it's showing me 74. So to guess lower, I press A. To press uh, to guess higher, I press B. So I'm going to guess lower than 74. So tick, I was correct. So now it's going to show me 70. So again, I'm going to guess lower. Correct. I get a point. So 34, probably higher. Correct. So I'm going to keep on going until I get one wrong. 63, uh, lower. Chances are it's lower. Okay, getting them all right so far. Here's a tough one, 57. Okay, I'm gonna guess lower. No, wrong. So at the end then, so it shows me what it was, it was 64, so I guess lower than 57. It was 50, It was 64 was the answer. So it'll just show game over and it'll tell me how many I got right, I think. Let me see if it shows the score. Score, four. So I got four right. So that is the game that we're going to be uh, programming today in uh, using Microbit, so on the Make Code website. Okay, so, sorry, I just need to get my phone ready so I can switch between the scenes and choose camera angles. Okay, so let me see, who do we have today? So I'll just call out some of our all of our coders that we have today. So we have Oz Teen, um, Olek, Carlos, Aoife, Piper, Carol, Minecraft, Luna, Landlord656, JSpace, Star Behan, Piper, I think I called out Piper. And have I missed anyone? I think that's everyone. So you're all very welcome. Um, I can see some people are working away, uh, starting the project and, and working ahead. So that's absolutely no problem as usual. Um, if you want to work ahead, work ahead. If you want to come along with me, come along with me and I'll tell you how that works. So if this is your first time uh, doing a code along with ourselves here, let me get rid of my head for the moment, so it's not confusing. So if this is the first time you're doing a code along uh, with ourselves, you'll be seeing me in this little YouTube box here, broadcasting live, and we're gonna work our way down through all these steps to make the project. 
And the way it works is I'll demonstrate a step. So when I'm demonstrating a step, if you want to go into full screen and you'll get a good clear picture of, of me and uh, of my screen, more importantly, and the code that I'm adding. So and then once I'm finished demonstrating a step, if you want to come out of full screen, you'll have a second tab open for creating your code. So one tab for the instructions, one tab for the code. You do the code and then you come back here and you mark your step as done. OK, so we'll get going. Um, so the very first step is to create a new microbit project here. Let me hide that video. So if you click on the little tool, tool tip here, it'll open up the box and you can click on this link here, makecode.microbit.org and that will open up the microbit website and then click on new project, call it what you want, you want to call it higher or lower. Sorry, I'm ducking so I can see under my microphone, higher or lower, and it will create the project and load up the uh, microbit project editor. So I'll let everyone go ahead and do that now. So step number one, just click on the link in the little blue box and click on the makecode.microbit.org website. So it opens up a second tab and then click on new project, call it whatever you want. It's a numbers game, a higher or lower game. So that's what I called it. And then once you've done that, if you want to come back to the instructions page, Okay, I can see we've got uh, 14 people logged in and then we have a few other coders that are viewing our code along that aren't logged in. You're all very welcome. Um, and we have 10 coders have completed the first step. So I'll just give a little bit more time just to create the new, open up the microbit website um, and create a new project. OK, I can see 11 coders have completed that. So I'm going to move on to step number two. Actually, before I move on to step number two, I'll just give a quick tour around the microbit project editor, just in case if, if this is new to anyone on the code along. Um, so it's similar to the Scratch project editor in that Scratch has a stage area on the right hand side where you see what whatever code you create, it plays out there. For microbits on the left hand side here, we've got a microbit simulator. So it's actually a, a simulation of an actual microbit. And then we have our toolbox kind of in the middle where we can drag and drop our, um, we can drag and drop our code in into, and then the simulator refreshes and when you, and then it plays out the code. So here I said on shake show number zero, and we can see when it when we shake it, it shows the number zero. So that's basically it. It's it's simple enough. Um, if you do have a microbit, you can connect it and download it onto your microbit when you're finished. Um, but we'll just be using the simulator. OK, so let's move on to step number two. So that's we're going to create two variables. So in the game, we need the number that we're showing on the screen. And then we need the next number that you have to guess if, if it's going to be higher and lower than the current number. So we need two variables. We're going to call them number. We're going to call them number and next number. So number and next number. So if you want to go in to, uh, so let me, sorry, zoom out of there. Let me zoom in. No. Uh, so if you go into the variables toolbox, you can click on make a variable. We'll call the first one number and then do the same thing again. Click make a variable, call it next number like that. So you should have two variables created, one called number and one called next number. And we'll be using those in the game. So if you want to go ahead and create those two variables, And again, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting those two variables to a random number between 1 and 100. I think I said between 1 and 99, but we're actually going to do between 1 and 100. And we're going to show one of them. So if you think about it, we're going to have two variables, number and next number. And we're going to set both of those to random numbers. So say the first one is 17 
and the next one is 83. So we're going to show the seven, 17 on the screen, but you don't know the number 83, it's just in the background. And you have to guess if the next number, which is 83, if it's going to be higher or lower than 17. So you're probably going to be guessing higher because you know it's a number between 1 and 100. And then it'll say, yeah, you're correct. So it'll show the 83. And then in the background, it's going to get a new number, a new random number. And again, you have to guess if that's going to be higher or lower than 83. And let's say it's 42 and you guess lower. So correct, 42. And then it'll get a new random number and so on. It'll keep on doing that um, until you guess one of them wrong. And then it'll show you the game over animation and tell you your score. So that's the game. Okay, so we've got 12 coders have completed step number two. So I'm going to move on to step number three. So we're going to set up the start of the game, as I said. We're going to, um, we're going to set the, the variables number and next number to random numbers. Each one of them we're going to set to a random number between 1 and 100. And then we're just going to show the first one, which is number. Okay, so I'm going to go and add, switch across to... Uh, the, micro, the make code website to add this in. So we're going to get a set number and this goes inside the on start. So set next number. Uh, we'll get two of these. I'll change one of them to be number. So here, let me zoom in so it's easier to see. So on start set number to zero and set next number to zero, but we don't want to set them to zero. We want to go into math and in here there is pick random zero to 10. I'll just get two of those and put them in instead of zero. And the numbers we want to get are between one and 100. One and 100. And then finally, we want to show the number on the screen. So we're going to go into basic, show number, and then into variables and get the number, the number block and put it inside show number. So it says show number number. So if I zoom out now and I just run my code, it gets, it'll put in two random numbers for each of those and then it'll show the first one, which was 21. So I'll do that again. So it's 91. So if you want to go and do that code in step number three, so you are creating two new variables, one called number and one called next number. And then in the on start, in the on start block, you're setting the number variable to picking a ram random number between one and 100, and you're doing the same for next number. So if you remember variables, what we use variables for is just to remember something, to store something. So in a game, you might use score as, um, as a variable, you set it at zero, and then it goes up through the game, and that score variable just remembers what the current value of score is. And that's what we're doing here for these. So number and next number, we're just setting a value for them. So picking a number between one and a hundred, and then we're uh, we're just going to show the number, the number variable. This is going to get confusing. Number, next number, show number, number. Uh, it might get a little bit confusing. Maybe I should have called them number one and number two. But anyway, so then uh, at the start of the game, after we've set them to be random numbers, we're going to just show the first one on the screen. And then, then we're going to program. It's where you can enter if it, uh, we're going to choose lower first. We're going to program how to do that. Okay, so I think we've got 12 people have, have completed that step. So we're going to move on to step number four. So here's where we're going to, we're going to program the A button. So the A button to be lower. So when you press the A button, we're going to pause just for half a second and what we're going to do is we're going to check if the next number is less than or equal to the, uh, the number so because you're guessing less and if is if it is less we're going to show a tick correct and else so if you guessed wrong if it's if it's greater than than if it's higher than uh, the number then you're, we're going to show an x okay so we'll add those in so I'll switch across now to Scratch, or not Scratch, to, to Microbit Make Code. So I'm going to go into the Input Toolbox. Let me here, let me just move these across, so I have a bit of space. So into the Input Toolbox and get the On Button A Pressed block. 
and then we're going to do a pause so it's a basic i think it's down the bottom pause ms we'll change that to 500 so just pause for half a second check my code and then we're going to go into the logic toolbox and get an if then else block so the big one that looks like a, a capital e if true then else and what what condition are we checking well you're guessing the a button is guessing that you're that it's lower so we want to check if it's lower so we're going to go into the logic toolbox and get a less than block here and put it in instead of true so if zero is less than zero what we are what we actually want to do is do less than or equal to which is this one here might be kind of hard to see it but it's the one underneath less than and um, because sometimes it might be so say the number say the first number is 17 and the next number so sorry say the first number is 70 and then the next number is 30 and you guess lower and um or sorry say it's actually 70 so 70 and 70 which can happen well, we don't want to say you're wrong if if it's the exact same number. So that's why we're doing the equal to. So less than or equal to. Okay, so what do we put in these? So we want to check that the next number is less than the number. So we're going to go to the variables toolbox and get a next number. And that goes in instead of the first zero and back into the variables toolbox and get a number. And that goes in for the second one. So if next number is less than or equal to number. So if we're right, then we want to show the icon tick. I'll duplicate that. I just so you know, to, way to duplicate is just right click and then you can duplicate and it creates a copy. Um, and else we're wrong. We'll show the X like so. So if you want to go ahead and do that step number four. So on button on button A pressed. You're going to pause for 500 milliseconds for half a second. Then you're going to go into the logic toolbox and get an if then else block and put that in. And then again in the logic toolbox, you want to get a less than. So it's zero less than zero. And that goes inside instead of the true of the if then, because this is the condition that we're checking. And you want to change that to a less than or equal to. And then in, instead of the first zero, you're going to put in next number. In the variables toolbox and then in the, instead of the second zero you're going to put a number so the condition we're checking is if the next number is less than or equal to number then we'll show the tick icon the correct icon else if it's not so if it's higher than it if it's greater than it then we're going to show the x so you guessed wrong okay i can see 12 coders have completed that so i'll just give it a little bit more time for step number four choosing lower again as usual i just try and go up, go along at a kind of steady pace some people work ahead uh, work down through the steps ahead of me and that's no problem that's brilliant some people take their uh, take their time and work a little bit slower than me so if i am going a bit faster than the way you're working through it that's no problem just try and take your time work through it at your own pace all the instructions are there and they stay up there and then at the end we always put up the recording uh, in this video box here so at the moment we're broadcasting live in this box but when we're finished we actually just take the recording and we put it put it in there instead so you can always watch it back if you need to okay so we'll move on now we've 12 coders have completed that step so we're going to move on to step number five and that's scoring a point so all we're going to do is we're just going to add in a little bit of code into the, the on button A press code we just added in. Um, and what we're going to say is when you uh, choose correctly, so we've already shown the correct tick, we're going to pause for a second, we're going to change the score by one, and then we're going to pause for another second. So that's all we're going to do in there. I can see some people are using the React button which if you're new to our code along, so you can click on the react button here and you can react and it'll go in there. So it's just for a little bit of fun. And um, if you're ever having any problems uh, or issues with any of the 
the the instructions or if I'm going way too fast put in a red thumbs down and if I see it I'll try and slow down and, and, and uh, maybe go back through the steps of the last uh, the last step the instructions okay so let's add in this let's score a point so we're going to wait a second score a point and then uh, wait another second so back into my code so I'm going to be adding it in here underneath show icon so what do I want to do? I want to go into basic and get the pause MS. I'll change that to be one second. And I know I want two of these. So I'm actually just now I'm just going to delete or not delete duplicate. So I've got two of them pause MS 1000. And then in the middle here, I'm going to go into advanced and game. And there should be a change score by one. So click on advanced, go into game and then change score by one and that goes in between them here in between the two pause ms so now what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to refresh it and see if it's right so 47 i'm going to guess lower i got it right and i would have got a point that little flash there lets me know i got a point um okay so if you want to do that step number five which is scoring a point and just adding in those three blocks the pause MS 1000 if, and then if you want to duplicate it, uh, so you've got two of them and then you put in the chain score by one in between them. So, but you'll need to go into the advanced game toolbox to get the chain score by one. Okay, it seems like most people are kind of working ahead of me, which is brilliant. We're up to 12 coders already have completed that step. So I'll just give a little bit more time before we move on to step number six. Actually, let's just have a look. Step number six is we're going to reset the numbers. So that's after you've done one round and you guess correctly, we want to reset the numbers. Um, so we're going to get a new next number. Um, or I'll, I'll explain it as we go through it because it's slightly complicated then we are going to do a game over. So if you get it incorrect, what should happen? And then we're also, once we're finished all that, the code for choosing lower, we're actually just gonna duplicate it and change it around a little bit for, chain, for uh, choosing higher. So one is choosing lower, button A is choosing lower, and button B is gonna be choose higher, but it's gonna be very similar code. So we're gonna do all the code for button A, then we're gonna duplicate it, create a copy of it, change it around slightly and then that's button B done as well uh, and then that will be the end okay so where are we so we've done step number five so we're going to move on to step number six and that's we're going to reset the numbers so let me zoom in a little bit so underneath the the three code blocks we just added so once you score up you once you get it correct we're going to show a tick we're going to pause, score a point, pause again. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the next number. So, so say the number was 10 and the next number was 30 and you guessed it was going to be higher. You get a tick, you get a point. What we're actually going to do is we're going to take the next number and make that be the number. So 30 is now the number and that's this uh, code here. So set number to next number and then we're going to get a new number for next number so 30 is now the number and then we'll generate a new number a random between 1, 1 and 100 say 83 and then if you get that right that 83 will go to be the number and then you'll get a new one and that's the way it keeps on moving along like that and then we're also going to show the number it's, it's something that we need to do we probably could have put this into a function because this code these two here are similar are the same as these two here. So rather than repeat it, we could have maybe had a function and just called the function, but we'll, we'll, we'll work away as it is for the moment. Okay, so I'm gonna add these code blocks in, these three code blocks in. So let me jump across to the code, move it up a little bit. Okay, so what did we say? We're gonna set the number. So go into variables and get a set variable two and we're going to choose that to be number so set number to be next number set number to next number and then we're going to say 
Oh, do you know what I can just do? Oh, no, I, I, I could duplicate it from over here, but I won't. I'll, 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 I'll build it again. So into variables, get set ne next number to zero, then into math and get a pick random zero to 10. And then change that to one to 100. Oh, not 1,100, just one, 100. And that should be one. So set next number to pick random one to 100. And then we want to show number. And I am actually just going to duplicate this from over here and bring it in. So show number, number. So let's test if this works. So I'm going to just refresh. So good, 89, good high number. So chances are the next number is going to be lower. So when I click on lower, hopefully it'll be correct. I'll get my tick, I'll get my point. It'll set number to be the next number and it'll generate a new uh, random number. So let's see. Oh, I got it wrong. <laughs> so it must have been actually higher. Okay, let's do it again. So 96. Okay, surely it's lower. Tick lower. So then, oh, it's only a small bit lower. So 95. Go lower again. Tick. And it should show the number. So 77. And so on. So I can see that that's working. So if you want to go ahead and do that step, that is step number six, resetting the number. So it's just adding in those three blocks. Set number to next number. Set next number to pick random one to 100 and then show the number variable. So as I said, it is kind of a little bit confusing with all the numbers, number, next number, show number, number. Uh, I maybe should have call them number one and number two or number a number b now actually number a and b would be confusing because of button a and button b so you can't win but hopefully it makes sense to you i can see that ozteen has already completed the project well done ozteen so as usual just to say now that i see that somebody has um completed the project um, we are going to give away a micro bit again. So if you want to add something new into the project once you've finished it, and then if you want to submit it into the Codiverse, um, you know, maybe you might might change the instead of the ticks and the X, the, the correct and the X, you might do like little animations of emojis or, or something like that. Um, you can even get it to play sounds, you know, so you can add different things into the game. So if you want to, um, we'll do it as usual, we'll do a competition where you can add in your own ideas into the game, submit your project into the Codiverse, and then we'll pick one of them and give it away at the, at the next code along. Okay, so we've got 13 coders have completed that step. So we're going to move on to step number seven. So this is the game over step. So again, our game over code that we're adding in. So we're gonna add it into the on button A pressed. We're gonna go all the way down. And we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be adding it in underneath the show icon X. So what we're gonna do is when you get it wrong, you're gonna to wanna to see what the number was. So we're gonna pause a second. We're gonna show you what the next number was that you got wrong and then pause another, another second and then just use the game over block from the game to a box and that will just automatically uh, set the game is over it'll run the kind of game over animation say game over score and it'll show you your score so it does all that just using one block okay so let's add this in so we're going to be adding it in here underneath show icon x so what did we say we're going to pause for a second wasn't it Yep, pause for a second. And we need two of those. And then we're gonna show the number, or show next number, because that's what the, what we were guessing. So show number, next number. So that's the, the next number that you guessed wrong. And then into game, and game over. Like that. Okay, so let me test this code. So 76 just scrolled across there. So I'm going to guess lower. So wrong. It was actually 78. And the game over animation, it'll say game over and then it'll say score zero because they got zero. Correct. 
game over, score, and zero. Okay, so there we go, the code works. So if you wanna go ahead and add that code in for step number seven, so you're adding in the code underneath the show icon X. And we're gonna pause for 1000 milliseconds for one second. We're gonna show number and use the next number variable. And then we're gonna pause for another second and then game over from the game to a box. And I think it's important to do that. It's like when you get it, when you get it wrong, you're gonna to want to know, well, what was it? So and that's why we're doing the show number next number. So you can see there, like I, it was 76 was the number, the first number. And I obviously guess lower because chances are the next number is gonna be lower, but it was actually 78. So I got the X and then it said 78 and then it did the game over animation. Okay, you see Striped Guitar has completed the project. So well done, people are flying away. Um, I can see 14 coders have completed game over. So I'm gonna move on then to, um, actually before I move on, I'll just quickly call out everyone that is working away with us today. So we have Luna, Striped Guitar, Coder101, um, Oz Teen, Piper 2021, Honey Badger, Carol 2000, uh, Carlos Cinco. Have I missed anyone? Tomri, Olek, Honey Badger, I think I called it Honey Badger, J Space, Carol 2000. So just to call everyone out that's working away today. Okay, so we'll move on now to choosing higher. So as I said, the code is very, very similar to choosing lower. So choosing lower was on button A and we've finished coding all that. So for choosing higher, we're gonna program button B. And what we're going to do is we're just gonna duplicate all the code, the big block of code for button A, and then we're gonna change it to B, and then we're gonna say greater than or equal to. And I think that that is the only difference. So again, we're gonna duplicate, say on button B pressed, and then in the if then, we're gonna say if next number is greater than or equal to, because we're choosing higher. So if it is higher, then you're correct. If it's not, then you're incorrect, and it'll be game over. Um, so yeah, just reading the instructions here. Now we need to make two changes. Change the button to button B, and then it's changes to, uh, to greater than. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So if you're following along with me, I'll show you how. So first of all, I'm gonna just create a little bit of space because I'm gonna need space here. So I've got my big block of code here for on button B pressed. So if I right click up the very top of it, because I want, to, I want to duplicate the whole thing. So right click and then click on duplicate and it creates a copy. I'm gonna drag it across here. Actually, if I can ask you all a question, do you know why this is kind of in a ghost effect? You can see this is in a ghost effect. It's not kind of filled in with the colors. If you know why, uh, click on the green thumbs up if you don't know why, click on the red thumbs down. So just get a little bit of feedback. I'll, I'll tell you why it is, but I just wanna see if people know why um, it is or if it isn't. So if you know why this uh, code is kind of has a ghost effect, it's kind of grayed out. If you know why, put in a green thumbs up. If you don't know why, put in a red thumbs down. So I can see Leandra is given a green thumbs up. Carol, 2000, green thumbs up. You do know why, Minecraft, Landlord, okay, good. I think we might've covered this before, but I just wanna, wanted to get a quick bit of feedback. Okay, so I'll explain it anyway. For anyone who doesn't know, it's because you cannot program the button A twice. You can't do it twice. You can only program it once. And we're trying to, at the moment, we're trying to program it twice. So it says on button A pressed, 
here and it also says on button A pressed here and then the code doesn't know well, which one do I need to do so it'll, it'll just take one of them so once I change this to on button B pressed because I want to program the button B you'll see that it fills in and now it's different so it, it'll work okay so that's the first change you need to change it to on button B pressed and then the second change is instead of less than or equal to we want to change it to the bottom one here which is greater than or equal to because for button B we're guessing higher okay let me check my code let's see if this works so that's all I need to do it's just duplicate change it to button B and change it to greater than so I'm going to refresh here so first number is 89 okay 89 I'm going to get slower correct so it was 51 oh tough one I'm going to guess higher because I want to test that out correct good so what was it it was only a small bit higher 54 I'm going to guess higher again incorrect so it should show me what it was it was 17 and it'll run the game over animation and show you show me my score which was two I think I got two so that's it for the choosing higher so if you want to go ahead and this actually that's it for the project so if you want to go ahead and do that um did I see some red thumbs down yeah coding club and Olek you might have known why it was uh, in the ghost effect to kind of grayed out and it's because you can't program the button a twice or you know you can't do uh, it would be the same for button b and, and things like that if you put in two of the exact same blocks for you know it can only run it uh, once so you can't do two of the same so let me see how many have completed the project so 14 have already completed the project so well done everyone we actually flew through this today um, I thought I thought it would take a little bit longer so while people are th the rest of the coders are kind of working away and finishing off the project we'll just have a quick chat about what you know maybe some ideas that you could do for the game to to put in your own kind of spin or your own ideas into it so I mean, as I said, you could change the the icons. So instead of the correct and the X, you can actually design your own icons. So let me put in something different here. So in the basic toolbox, there's this show LEDs and you can actually design your own. No, I'm just sorry, I'm just doing random. Uh, design at the moment but just to show you that you can um, that you can use that block here let me press a and b will it work yeah you know, it's, it's trying to run the other code as well um, come on show me my icon so you can actually design your own uh, emojis and, and kind of icons so you could do that and um, you can actually make them you can do a animation so I'll show you what I mean So you can kind of stack these up and get them to play one after each other. Uh, here, I'm just going to take these out. So it just runs this code. So you can see I've kind of created a little mini animation. It's quite kind of simple, but just running, running, running down through these is kind of creating that animation effect. But you know, you can get a lot more creative than that. So that's one thing you could do. Another thing you could do would be to add in some sound. So when you, um, where is the play sound? So when you get one right, you could say happy. Don't know if you heard that. My my volume is kind of low. Well, you could add in sound effects to it and, and play a sad sound or or something like that if you get it wrong. Um, what else could you do? You Instead of using the on button A and button B to go up or down, you might, you can use some of the other inputs. You could use on shake. Um, there's also logo up and logo down. So, um, and screen up and screen down or tilt left and t tilt right so the micro bits the actual micro bits themselves have an acceler accelerometer in them which is a little uh, sensor that can detect movement 
So these sensors are inside Fitbits and things like that, and it can detect if you tilt it one way or the other. So you could actually use that uh, instead. So here, let me put my code in here. I'm gonna take out the on start as well. So I can show this. So when I tilt left, see, I tilt, le tilt left, it goes that way. You could do another one for tilt right here. Let me show this properly. So we'll do the heart icon for left and see the way that that's ghosted again because I can't have two tilt lefts. So we'll go tilt right and we'll choose that. So refresh left shows the heart right. So you could actually guess higher or lower if you actually have a micro bit. I know a lot of you do. People that are uh, subscribed to our inventor packs have them, but you could actually get the game to work to choose your selection, not by pressing the buttons, but by tilting it left and right. So that's another thing you could do. So there's lots of different ideas and they're just ones I come up with. You guys and girls always come up with better ideas than me. You know, each time for the competitions, uh, we're always so impressed with them. So have a think, once you've finished your project, have a think about what you'd like to do, something that you'd like to add in to the code, to the game and add it in and then submitted into the Codyverse. So up the very top of the, our coding club, we've got the Codyverse. So the Codyverse is where we kind of uh, show off all our different, uh, what we're working on and, and things like that. So we can see the entries from last week's. So we'll do a page again for the entries for, for this, uh, for this week's. So you, um, so to submit your project, you just click on share now in here and you can click on how to share a microbit project. It'll show you how to get the link because you just need to get the link uh, for your project. And you paste the link in there, you, you copy it and you paste it in here and give it a name, give it a bit of a description of what, what, what you did different and click on share my project. And they'll get listed in the Codyverse and we'll also do a separate page uh, for them uh, where we'll have them all together and people can react to them and we'll pick out one of them and then send off um, send off the microbit to that person. So last week it was Code Dan who won the uh, the microbit. So that's it. We, it was a quick one today, just 45 minutes. I hope you all enjoyed that. Do I have a, yeah, I have a quality work GIF here. So hang on, let me give you this for the work you've done today, well done. Um, it's good using microbits and the microbit project. Um, they're, 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 it's, it's, they're really fun. So if you don't have one, um, you can buy them online. If you subscribe to our inventor packs in our coding club, we, we send them out. Um, they are really fun and there's lots and lots of different things you can do with them. Well, I'm after sending a GIF, but it doesn't seem to have loaded in. Not to worry. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed that today. We'll be doing more code alongs next Saturday. So we're back to one code along for six to nine year olds, at half nine in the morning, and then another code along for 10 plus year olds at 11 o'clock in the morning. So we're gonna be doing the same next Saturday again. So we hope you have a good weekend, have a nice week, and we'll hopefully see you again soon. Bye.